All right, guys, the third topic is going to be long tones and long notes. <laughs> So long tones are very important. Have you ever seen a saxophonist go on stage and they're performing? And maybe they're not, you know, the craziest player. Obviously, they're not Charlie Parker. They're not doing any crazy, ridiculous riffs. But they do this one thing that gets everyone in the audience to literally stand up on their feet and start clapping for like 10 minutes straight. Have you ever seen that happen? What usually is that one thing that makes everyone not just two, three people stand up, but everyone stand up and start clapping. What is it? What is it? Yes, you guessed it. You guessed it. A long, everlastingly long note. It always does the trick. It always seems to do the trick, especially for saxophone players, but not just saxophone players. It can be any instrument, but typically... You know, for a performing saxophonist, when you hit that long note and it's the right timing and it's the right note and it's the right intonation and it's the right everything, like everything falls together. So that's the power of the long notes. Now let's talk a little bit about long tones. Long tones are great to practice because they allow you to get really familiar with every single note on your instrument. And they also allow you to hone in on your embouchure. Embouchure, if you don't know what that means, is basically the way your mouth is on the mouthpiece. And it's a really important part of playing as a saxophonist because you want to make sure that your embouchure is set and is steady. It's not too firm, but it allows you the flexibility to play your instrument, but it also allows you to be able to hold out, for example, a long note for a long time. Uh, without it sounding shaky and without the intonation going crazy. A lot of the times your intonation is controlled by your embouchure. Now we obviously know it's also controlled by the position of your mouthpiece on the mouthpiece and a lot, whole heap a lot of factors can be into that. It could be the height of the keys on your sax that affects your intonation. It could be your reed. It could be a chip in your mouthpiece. It could be a lot of things. But most of the time, um, the thing that you can use to control your intonation the best is your embouchure so that's why it's really important to focus on your embouchure and the best way to practice focusing on your embouchure is by doing some long tone exercises so long tone exercises are super simple there's a couple of them i'm going to introduce to you guys today that i have used personally when practicing the saxophone and uh, you can choose to create your own too or you can use some of the ones that i use it's totally up to you the first thing i do is i practice with just any note I practice holding out the note for eight beats really slowly on the metronome. I also use crescendoing when I practice this as well, so I can get a little bit of dynamic practice. This is a really important exercise to do on not just, you know, G or a low D or like a typical note on the sax that we always play, but it's important to be able to do this on every single note on the saxophone. You can practice your long tones with just a G for the next six years, and trust me, your G is gonna sound beautiful but when it's time for you to go on stage and perform and hit that high f sharp for a very long time it might be a little bit shaky and it might not sound as consistent as your g so it's very important when you do long tone exercises to do them with every single note on your sax but for today i'm going to just demonstrate it on g this is the first exercise i'm going to take the metronome i'm going to get it to maybe 60 beats per minute so pretty slow and i'm going to make sure i count to eight while I count to eight, this is just as the beats click, I count one, two, three. I'm counting with each click. So while I count to eight, I'm going to start on a G as quietly as possible, and I'm going to increase the volume ever so slightly until I reach the number eight. For example, it's going to be like G and grow and get really loud. <laughs> so let me demonstrate. over and over again and of course with different 
separate notes on the saxophone is going to allow you to focus on your embouchure to eliminate that shakiness when you don't want to be using vibrato for example you want to be able to use it but you also want to be able to not use it so doing this will train your embouchure to be able to get a consistent shape on your instrument it's also going to help you with dynamics so it's going to help you practice your ability to crescendo you can also do the same exercise backwards you can start loud and then gradually get soft and that's going to help you to also be able to decrescendo so that's a great exercise that you can use another great exercise that i do when practicing my long tones is basically doing my major scale like we talked about the g major major scale uh, but being able to play the entire scale all the way up full octave and then back down back to middle g uh, really slowly just like this uh, sometimes when I practice I don't use a metronome but I encourage you to use a metronome especially if you're not used to practicing without one you can just literally take it so slow still in time though so about four beats per note and you're going to want to go through the entire scale I'll use the G major scale to demonstrate and I won't do the entire or um you know full octave scale for you right now but just to demonstrate what it sounds like <laughs> idea and the more you do it you're gonna want to try and breathe less often and this will also help you with building up your stamina and being able to hold out notes for a long time or being able to play for a long time without having to breathe so that's a great exercise that you can definitely check out i do that most times before i start to play my saxophone just as a regular warm-up because it's always great to be able to get comfortable with every single note on your instrument and being able to play them for long periods of time now let me demonstrate an example of the power of long notes in a solo i'm gonna just pull up another backing track here and i'm gonna play something let's see here My long tones were not that long, but a long note, it does go a long way. So definitely start to implement this into your solos. I know in the very beginning of this series, in the first video, I talked a little bit about how you can pick and choose some of these things to add into your solo. I did mention a little bit about the concept of a climax and what a climax is, is basically the highlight of your solo. So it's basically the point in your solo in which you want it to be like a statement and most times you know putting in a long note right there especially a high long note can be that statement of the solo so it's just something to think about but yeah have fun guys practicing your long toes and your long notes and if you want to get into the next topic head to the next video bye